Hi, it's Professor Lusheen again. <clears throat> this is the pre-recorded lecture for incentive programs and worker motivation for occupational safety management. Uh, this particular topic, actually, we have a whole course dedicated to it, but uh, I just want to cover some of the main themes that align itself with the, the premise of this course. Over here on the left, we get this funny picture. Um, it's the classic uh, motivate with a carrot or uh, punish or threaten with a stick or a porch pitchfork in this case. Over on the right, I've got this funny meme, beatings will continue until morale improves. And then finally in the middle, we have my hero, Ron Swanson, uh, indicating that the only things that motivate people are money, fear, and hunger. So here's a quick overview. I am just going to scratch the surface. Uh, mostly what I want to do is just point out a few things that you can do uh, as you pursue or if you want to develop an incentive program and then I'm going to talk about some of the influencers of the field and uh, my students need to watch um, the four additional videos that I assign that go along with this. So I like to start out with this video. I think it's funny. Oops, didn't mean to do that. So there's a whole series of those videos, uh, Terry Tate, office linebacker. And the reason I showed it, one is because it's funny. Uh, second is it's it's interesting how that's kind of our initial uh, approach to behavioral correction is to punish. Um, if we punish you, you won't do it again. But the problem is if the punishment isn't, uh, punishment doesn't usually work. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but it doesn't tend to affect future unless it's already there as a threat. Um, anyway, so let's get into what really motivates people. And what's interesting is you, if you, I did like a quick you know search just to verify some of the things I'd already known, and indeed that our main um, almost um, genetic drive for um, why we do things is to avoid pain or gain pleasure, which is sounds a bit hedonistic, but and th but that's kind of how we are, that when there are things that we don't like, whether it's you know watching this you know, recorded lecture or writing a paper or, or studying, we try to find other things to do to occupy our time because um, we enjoy them. It, it What we enjoy, we tend to... Um, we tend to you know move toward but then there was a list an article was written that went beyond um this avoid pain and uh, gain pleasure where money and rewards do provide some form of incentive but um they did make note that success is more of what you do in your pursuit of those things and not the destination there's also we have this desire to be the best or to improve um but in order to do that you need to sacrifice which is to um you know there's pain involved with that not physical pain on all accounts but sacrifice helping others is giving yourself and there's pleasure in that though it may not be readily uh, evident uh power and fame 
problem is you do lose things um, like privacy. We've seen that, especially in this social media age. Recognition, such as intrinsic, you know, patting somebody on the back, telling them a good job, that, that tends to be a very strong uh, incentive for people. And then finally, people just have this intrinsic passion to um, do things. But the problem is sometimes that actually takes us away uh, or it takes our attention away from things that need to get done. So incentives are just meant to, um, in a way, guide us, um, to kind of push us in the right direction. Uh, and so we have to be really careful with how we assign them and how they're aligned. We may think they're aligned a certain way. We may make that assumption and then people view it a different way and then we're not getting the, uh, the behaviors of the actions that we designed the incentives for. So the, a lot of thought and design need to go into the creation of these programs. Uh, and you can see that you've probably read them all on the screen, but let's kind of go through that right now. So where this really all comes from is you probably remember B.F. Skinner from your psychology courses, whether it's in high school or in college. And his theory on behavioral modification is called the ABC, in which it, there's an antecedent, there is a behavior, then there's a consequence. And what Skinner taught us is that if we can properly incentivize, we can get the behaviors we want. Uh, but if we're getting behaviors we don't want, then we provide a form of consequence or, or punishment. And with that, it's like, well, that must be really easy. But the problem is um, what companies were doing is when they had a safety incentive program, they were saying, okay, we will give you money, a party, something, you know, something in, uh, extrinsic if we don't have any injuries this year. But what the research has really shown is that people were, in order to get their reward, they just wouldn't report it. The thing is, that's what they what was happening was they go, you know, months without a reported injury. They're like, boy, this is really working. But then someone would get so severely injured that they couldn't take care of it on their own. And then managed to be like, well, how, where did this came from nowhere? So it... What this does is it, it kind of gives the the counter argument to what we've been talking about in this course, and that is, we want more information. We want it'd be nice if workers just voiced their concerns, reported their concerns before even anybody got hurt, whether it's a near miss or just a reported concern, and then we can look into it and try to find a way to mitigate the issue or find out what we can do to try to control exposures. But instead, if we suppress that kind of information, and even when things are happening, we suppress it, things are just going to get worse. Eventually, you know, they'll roll that 20-sided uh, Dungeons & Dragons dice, and it'll turn up 20 out of 20, and boom, somebody gets a super severe injury or possibly a fatality. Um, another thing to think about incentivizing is incentivizing extraordinary work. So if we haven't done a really good job of integrating safety into the work itself, and we're still at the phase, the early phase, in which people have to go and put on personal protective equipment or follow a particular series of um, steps or tasks in order to be safe, well then, yeah, we should definitely give them extra for doing extra work because they can get the job done without doing those things and we pay them for that and now we're expecting them to, to do more. So we need to incentivize it to get them to do it. For a while there, OSHA was very much against um, safety incentive programs and they had come out with a um, an interpretation, I believe in January of 2016 or January of 2017, which basically stated if an OSHA investigator comes out to your plant, does an inspection, sees that you have a safety incentive program and finds that workers have been hiding injuries to achieve whatever the reward is, they would cite you for each individual instance. But in uh, but there was an update. October 11th, 2018 memo came from Kim Stilley. Kim used to be the area director out of Madison. Actually, I, I've had Kim speak in my classes or I've spoken to her before. And what they're basically saying is, no, there are incentive programs that are properly designed and properly aligned that don't motivate injury hiding, but actually uh, motivate workers to share more. And that's what we had just talked about. So OSHA recognizes that. Now, as long as your program properly identifies that incentivize that you're incentivizing the reporting of things or the participation in things or the engagement of things and you're rewarding that the things that lead to um you know better outcomes more realistic outcomes then that's okay but if you're incentivizing a some you know a quarter without um or a month without injuries yeah then there's going to be injury hiding and they're going to get you for it under um i believe 1904 35b1 
So let's get to the experts here, round, round this up. So I want you to watch this um, almost 60 minute video. Uh, it's, a, it's a TEDx, Virginia Tech video with E. Scott Geller, Dr. Geller. Uh, I believe in your 450 class, it's his book that you read. And I've actually gotten to um, speak to Scott a few times in the pre last year and a half, along with his daughter. And he's got some great work out there. He's you know one of the um, you know founding fathers of behavioral-based safety. And uh, so I want you to watch this video. He's got some great input on what it takes to... Um, for people to gain self-motivation. I just got a few off of his video here, and that is to empower workers. They feel incompetent, they're doing worthwhile work, they're self-motivation, so please watch that. Next is, this is a hero of mine, Dr. DJ Moran. Uh, he's a trained psychi psychologist. Um, he goes around helping people out with uh, work mindfulness and the ACT, which is the Acceptance and Commitment Therapy approach, um, and gets into self-acceptance. Uh, self um, he he's spoken a few times at Whitewater, and I believe there are some videos on YouTube of his longer talks. You know, they're like you know forty five to sixty minutes. But uh, I found a short uh, four and a half minute video, which was I think just part of a larger series of um, webinars that he had done, and you get kind of a feel for what he does. And mindfulness has been something that's been um, sort of in the spotlight lately when it, in the safety field that if people can be more mindful of themselves and the work they're doing, they're more focused and therefore they, um, uh, they look out for themselves and look out for others. So they, they're, they're able to control distractions and actual emotions and emotional intelligence is another thing that's kind of creeping into our field. Um, in order to self-regulate. And that's, you know, again, that's that's a good thing. I don't know how realistic it is in certain situations, but um, I like DJ's work. I also like um, some of the things that came out of um, Dan Pink's uh, book, Drive. And it's great because this group over in the UK, RSA or RS Animate, Animate uh, summed or condensed one of Dan's lectures down to just like a almost 11 minute and it's kind of a cartoonish um, uh, reorganization. I really like it. And it, he breaks it down to once money is taken off the table or if you need people to go beyond just basic if-then algorithmic type behaviors, you have to provide autonomy, mastery, and purpose. That's what will motivate people to do more. And I think it's kind of a cool message. Now let's let's get to the the green beans and ice cream. Uh, this is Bill Sims. I met Bill. Um, I've met him at a few conferences. He speaks at a lot of the national conferences, and um, his message and his company they they go to companies and they do consulting work and they help companies build safety incentive programs. And they've got all kinds of different uh, tools and contests and and campaigns and things like that. And it's, it's an interesting approach. And so I want you to watch this, this six and a half minute video. He's being interviewed for something. He's got a lot of other videos on YouTube that you can check out. Um, and I do have his book. Um, he gave it to me after I met him at this conference. And so it's interesting. You know, it's just, it's kind of a simple approach to trying to get workers more engaged in the safety process. So that's all I really wanted to cover. I really did just scratch the surface. Um, so here's what I want to do here at the end is does negative and reinforcement, either actual punishment or the threat of of a punitive response yield sustainable behavioral change? The answer is no, it doesn't. You would think it does. It seems logical to us because it seems to be our, our first response, but we have to actually resist that because do we like to be you know, punished or threatened when something doesn't go right, when we're trying to learn, but we're too afraid um, of being caught doing it wrong? But there isn't much learning there. There needs to be more of a positive interaction. On the other side of things, um, if money seems to be so, you know, we think it's so effective, like, oh, just give them more money and they'll get it done. And you'll see from the videos that I've asked you to watch, it doesn't, um, it, it, it does to an extent. And that's one thing they admit that, yeah, to an extent, I mean, you've seen Fear Factor with Joe Rogan, right? Hey, win $50,000 if you eat this pile of, of manure and they do it. So, but the problem is, is that sustainable? Would that work every day? Or would it only work once because they could only stomach it once? <laughs> I'm exaggerating. They lay in a, a plastic coffin with cockroaches and stuff like that. Anyway, you know, don't watch that show. Um, there are better ways. There are things that really drive people. And it's, it's, it's what people, it's not really what they need, it's what they want. Um, sure, they, we need money and shelter and stuff like that. Maslow's hierarchy. I didn't even bring it into this lecture because I didn't want to. 
But what I want, but really what it comes down to is you gotta go talk to the workers. You gotta get to know the people who are doing the work for the company. And in getting to know them, I think you can then elicit at least an indication of what's important to them, what they really want, to be recognized for working hard, to be asked, how are you doing? Or what can we, you know, do you need help with anything? Do you have any cool ideas you want to share? If anybody has any cool ideas, we'll reward you if, if you know, if it tends to work out. And just helping them enjoy themselves at work. And then trying to get safety more integrated into the work. And then every day just try to do a little bit better. Um, but if they recognize that you're not this ominous you know, manager that's going to punish them if they do something wrong, but rather someone they can turn to, to talk to, to ask questions, that wants them to uh, be successful, that wants them to enjoy being at work, that's what, that's what an incentive program really needs to strive toward. But that's you. You have to actually almost reprogram yourself. And maybe even reprogram or re-educate, uh, persuade management to adopt this more uh, maybe progressive or forward-thinking approach. And if you do that, you'll be able to motivate at least some workers. And if you can't, you know, you're not going to be 100% all the time. You got to understand that there are going to be some cave people, which stands for citizens against virtually everything. It's going to take a while to crack that nut. But um, eventually, if you're persistent uh, and you find different ways to really just get to know people, um, you'll find a lot more success. So please, uh, students, please watch those videos I indicated on the screen. They're in the, the Canvas site. And please read the other PDFs. Um, if you're just viewing uh, for your own enjoyment, thanks for joining us. And please uh, check me out on the link if you have any questions. I'd be happy to follow up with you.